It might be 65 degrees outside, but it's a whiteout inside in College Station, Texas. The 12th man has sold out Reed Arena. They're getting ready to watch senior point guard A.C. Law and the sixth ranked Aggies of Texas A&M meet Big 12 rival Oklahoma and senior Nate Carter. Outside, but inside Reed Arena, blizzard conditions, an atmosphere for Texas A&M basketball that was unimaginable just two years ago. The Aggies, sixth overall in the nation now, though, they routinely sell out conference games. They have one today with Oklahoma as we check the Big 12 conference standings. Texas A&M finds themselves in a 4-1 and one lock jam. At the top, this is a very important game for Oklahoma, right in the middle of the pack, trying to get back above 500. Hi again, everyone. Bob Shoes in here with Stephen Bardo. Thanks so much for spending part of your weekend with us. And Steve, to be in the middle of this atmosphere, it's amazing. And to think of the renaissance that this basketball program has undergone in the past couple of years under Billy Gillespie, equally impressive. It's been really impressive to take the atmosphere and the excitement from the football coliseum to bring it in here to Reed Coliseum. And the love affair with this a and basketball program just reflects the hard work that the young man put out on the floor. And speaking of hard work, two very good defensive teams yes. today, which we'll talk a lot about as the afternoon progresses. But both of these teams have a big-time front court player that they can go to as we check our star watch. Nate Carter, he has had a magnificent recent run for Oklahoma. And Joseph Jones, quite an athlete for the Aggies. Nate Carter got his mojo back when the Big 12 started. We call it senioritis. You wake up and you realize this is your last go around and he's playing like it. Joseph Jones, one of the better big men in the country that you don't talk about, very effective on the low block, bruising guy in the paint. Taking a look at our starting lineups, Texas A&M, the only team in the Big 12 to start the same lineup in every game so far this season. And a great backcourt matchup as well. Michael Neal has played very well this season for Oklahoma. And of course, AC Law, he is in the running for Big 12 Conference Player of the Year. 16 and a half points, about five assists, and the Aggies control the opening tip. I watched how AM will establish a high-low game with Jones and Kavalaskis working the interior. Kavalaskis fouled immediately. And to illustrate the renaissance of this program here at Texas A&M, the all-time matchup, 25 to one. Oklahoma leads Texas A&M. Back in 1998, in this very building, Texas A&M last beat Oklahoma. And the odds makers coming into today have Texas A&M as a 10-point favorite. Could you imagine there being a, another matchup in college basketball where a team is a double-digit favorite over a team that they are 1-25 against? It's amazing. It is amazing. Oklahoma has treated A&M like ball-headed step <laughs> in the past. I'm sure A&M going to have something to say about that this afternoon. Austin Johnson with his first steal of the afternoon. And now a chance for Oklahoma to take the early lead. And Oklahoma on the road lately have played some very tough opponents in tight games. They just lost their last one at Oklahoma State. Tony Crocker's first attempt, no good. And a nice wall off on the rebound by Josh Carter. That's a good look uh, for the first possession for the Sooners. Crocker, a very talented guard, found himself open. You won't see many of those this afternoon. Kirk rises, fires, and knocks it down. Dominique Kirk who might be one of the top three or four defensive players in the Big 12, scores the game's first two. I think he's one of the better defensive players in the country, as a matter of fact. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, very strong, wiry, and he's smart on the defensive end of the floor. Studies opponents' tapes, looks at their tendencies, and tries to take their first option away. Carter on the move, down the lane, the finger roll. Oh, he did the hard part and couldn't finish the easy part as the ball caroms out of bounds and stays with Texas A&M. And the Renaissance architect is Billy Gillespie. Back-to-back -back Big 12 Coach of the Year awards his first two seasons here at Texas A&M. And Jeff Capel put in a very difficult situation at Oklahoma with the departure of Kelvin Sampson. He lost some McDonald's All-Americans and now is trying to rebuild with his own player. And doing a fine job taking Sampson's players really and keeping the good things from Kelvin Sampson, the residual toughness of the Sooner Ball Club and putting his own touches on this club. So very good defensive team in Oklahoma. 
but also creative offensively, like right there. Austin Johnson got lost on a backdoor cut. Nice feed from Tony Crocker, the true freshman, and we're tied at two. Good job of floor spacing by Oklahoma, knowing that AM loves to pressure, they love to deny on the wing. So if you can get some back screen action away from the basketball, you can find yourself open underneath the basket. That's what I'm talking about, Bob. Look at the floor spacing. All the guys from Oklahoma outside of three-point lane, look at the backdoor cut by Johnson. Good job of recognition by Oklahoma. Texas A&M lost their last outing, their first Big 12 conference loss of the season, a two-point loss at Texas Tech a few nights ago. That took a little bit of the wind out of the Aggie sails, but awesome wind put right back in by Antonis Kavalaskis. So right there, Oklahoma went to a zone, which is typical defense and underneath out-of-bounds plays, and they cut it up. And there's the defense that we talked about, the great transition by Michael Neal. Gets back, anticipates the outlet, and returns the favor with a steal of his own. Good hustle by Neal that time to track down the loose ball. You don't necessarily, Neal doesn't get credited for those type of plays, Bob. More of a standstill shooter, but he'll do the dirty work when he called upon. From the baseline, Carter finds himself open, can't connect. And Josh Carter gets it away, falling to the floor. Nate Carter can't put it home, but the follow by Crocker is good, plus the foul. So Tony Crocker with hustle on the offensive glass, a chance for a three-point play. Been impressed with Oklahoma here, how they started the game on the road. Very inti uh, intimidating play to, place to come into, and they're just getting it done with hard work. See right there, Carter loses his footing, which allows Oklahoma to play, but the Sooners have come in with a lot of intensity and effort. It's voted well for them early. Longar, Longar checking in for the first time this afternoon. Taylor Griffin will sit down, and these are two outstanding defensive teams. Texas a and second in the nation in points against Oklahoma, 12th in the nation. Princeton, by the way, not surprised, first. Fewest points allowed per game. Three-point play completed by Crocker, and he immediately takes a seat as David Godbold comes on. Well, you were talking about that Princeton team and their defense. I believe AM is better because it's more of a true defensive style. Princeton limits the ball possessions per game, and so that helps their defensive uh, statistics. But this AM team is doing it in a power conference against a very talented ball club. Princeton always has great defensive statistics, at least in part because of the offense that That's they right. run. That's right. They shorten the game up with the possessions and their uh, Princeton-style offense. And not to take away from what, they're, what they've accomplished, because they do a fantastic job, but I believe this A&M team is definitely the best defensive squad in the country. Law rises and fires, barely grazes the front of the rim, forced that one up at four on the shot clock. So a good start, you'd have to say, for Oklahoma in a very difficult environment, taking the initial punch and standing strong with a one-point lead. Well, again, like we, talk, we showed earlier, look at the floor spacing of Oklahoma. They're spreading, paying him out defensively, and they're getting good looks at the basket. Carter passed up a wide open look down to Longar, and he's too strong with the jump hook. I think Jeff Capel was looking for Nate Carter to pull the trigger on a wide open 15 footer inside Jones rejected and that'll be a held ball possession arrow to Oklahoma good defense on the baseline from Longar Longar with a little over four minutes gone by in the first half we're off to a good start here in College Station the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March Meet the dollar menu nairs. From vintage pleather to McDonald's double cheeseburgers, these folks are all about the Washingtons. Looks like Rachel here has this season's it accessory. No wonder she rolls with such a handsome man -tourage. These people live like money grows on trees. Trees they can't find. But they have no trouble finding serious meals on the dollar menu. Now I'd buy that for a dollar. This car is packed with technology. But I find it very easy to use. The car is, is simple, intuitive. It's elegant, it's beautiful. The way it makes you feel, the safety, the security, the comfort. We walked away from an accident because of that car. The car is an absolute rocket. It's just a wonderful car to drive. You get what you pay for, it's that simple. When I was a kid, I thought these cars were the most beautiful in the world. 
and I still do. When my brother started selling auto insurance, I, I got a little pressure to use them. A little? I'm State Farm Agent Amy Kaplan, and this is a true story. I didn't pressure you. I just, I think blood is thicker than water. So with some of the staff, we switched from State Farm to him. The service is horrible. Well, he wouldn't call me back, and he's my brother. So I called him, and he was ready to switch back. State Farm treated us like family. Yeah, better. Great service and great rates, it's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by McDonald's and Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at nbusa.com. Hey, for us in the studio, let's check out some other Big 12 action. This figured to be a mismatch, and it has been Colorado at Kansas. Mario Chalmers hitting the three. It's 31-19 in favor of the Jayhawks. Bob? Dave, thanks very much. Billy Gillespie with an early message, maybe Stephen Bardo, to some of his starters. They have substituted in four new players. Actually, five new players. He sat down his entire starting lineup and puts five new bodies in the game. Well, he's sending a message that he doesn't like the effort that's starting the ball game. And we have to remember, a and is coming off a loss on the road at Tech. And Billy Gillespie will not hesitate to get after his guys and let them know, look, I'm not happy with what's going on as a result of the lineup change. A pair of freshmen now in the backcourt, Donald Sloan and Derek Rowland for A&M. Bobby Mays fresh off the bench for Oklahoma. Can't connect. And the rebound by the big tight end. An all Big 12 conference tight end this year. Martellus Bennett for Texas A&M. But don't mistake the message being sent by Billy Gillespie to his five starters taking his entire front unit and sitting them down. And who can argue with results like these? Well, look at, look at the statistics there. Billy Gillespie is a guy who he sold the young men on hard work, and that will get you to the promised land. And I know it sounds cliche-ish, but this guy really means hard work. You can't fake the defensive effort on his ball clubs. It has to be something that you hang your hat on. And obviously his five stars weren't doing that. But it's good motivation to let the guys on the bench know that, hey, if you come out and do what I ask you, you'll get an opportunity to play. Taylor Griffin's wide open three. Caroms all the way out to Bobby Mays. So a fresh shot block for Oklahoma. Well, you see the level of intensity has definitely picked up on the defensive end. And Oklahoma, who was smooth in their offensive sets early, looks a little ragged on this possession. Longar in the post with a nice post move. He goes around Marlon Pompey and scores inside to stretch the Oklahoma lead to 7-4. Little Kevin Michaelis on the block. Up and under, getting the defense off his feet. I like that from the big fella. He wants to be Kevin McHale, though. He's got to complain the entire length of the floor the other way that he got fouled and wasn't given the three-point play. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tell you what, boy, Kevin McHale was some kind of player on that low, that low post. Then it double teamed. From the corner, off the front rim from Derek Rowland, and a run out for Mays. And he will pull it back out. Good transition defense that time. Great look inside from Griffin to Longar. What a start for Oklahoma. It looks like Bennett and, and Pompey are not communicating defensively on who, who they have that time. You just don't see that against an A&M team. Sloan bumped on the floor. David Godbold called for the foul. Check that Bobby Mays called for the personal foul. AM did a good job initially of getting back defensively, but there's no communication. A line long guard, a wide open layup, and that's got to drive Coach Gillespie crazy. Second foul called against Oklahoma. Only one team foul in the first six and a half minutes for Texas AM. So the second unit for the Aggies has seen the lead swell to five for the Sooners. Mulebach and a nice high-low pass, but unable to convert on the baseline was Martellus Bennett. Well, Bennett, the tight end on the football squad, he's got to get a little bit stronger going to the bucket. Already five second chance points for Oklahoma. Griffin down the lane, a power move from Taylor Griffin. He's only been in double figures one time in his last 13 games, but does average about eight points per game. And he's a guy, Bob, that can score the basketball. He chooses not to. That's not his role right now. But if need be, he can put it up. Sloan's three, no good. And 
the ball caroms off of Bennett, out of bounds, goes back over to Oklahoma. And the Sooners with a seven-point lead, and here come the starters. So the message sent from Gillespie, but he also sees the scoreboard and realizes <laughs> that with that second unit in there, this game is starting to get a bit lopsided early on. Well, they were offensively challenged, that second group that was in the game for AM. And although they hang their hat on the defensive end of the floor, the team with the most points at the end wins the game. So you've got to get some offense in there. But watch how these guys pick it up in the half court defensive set. It is impressive the way you break it down. I'll tell you, <laughs> being able to sit alongside you and have you crawl inside the game the way you're able. <laughs> so right now, Oklahoma good, Texas A&M bad. Is yeah. what you're saying. And, okay. and, and, you know what? You have three or four games a season <laughs> that you come out and you're running in mud for whatever reason. And that's it looks like AM is just a step slow to come out of the block this afternoon. And it could be a steal, it could be a dunk that can get them going. AM a step slow, Longar, Longar with one step extra. And Oklahoma turns it over. Already points of the paint dominated by the Sooners. Backdoor cut, Carter. And he held on to the rim. I'm not sure if they're going to allow the basket. He'll go to the line. Yes, they will allow the basket. It'll be a three-point play opportunity for Josh Carter. Nice four set. Look at the backdoor cut by Carter. Defensively, Godbo was cheating the play. Carter recognizing that quickly backdoor cut. Good recognition on the offensive end by Carter. Now, Stephen, was it me, or did it look as if he held on to the rim for an extra beat? I thought the initial call coming from Steve Welmer was going to be to wave off the basket. I think that's what the Oklahoma sideline thought as well, and I think they have a case as Carter completes the three-point play. Now, to me, that, that didn't look like a basket that should have counted. I agree. The ball was it was going to be a miss, and he hung on the rim, but I think what happens when Welmer made the call if there's contact at the basket, they look at the player's safety. And Carter grabbing on the rim, just trying to keep himself up, didn't want to have an awkward fall. I think that's why they let it go. Neal passes inside the long guard. And he is fouled on the floor by Kavalaskis. And for Kavalaskis, that's his second personal foul. Now you be the judge. Should this basket have counted? Teams for the whole season, yeah. following the show from November to March. And if you can't get up and go, just remember to watch. Close. On ESPN, any game you can see it there. Front row seats, next best. The level of technology is unmatched by any other car I've driven. It's luxurious. It handles the road extremely well. The car is, is simple, intuitive. My father always told me to buy the best. You'll never be disappointed. And this is the best. In the front, you're in a race car. In the back, you're in a limousine. It does exactly what I expect it to do, and it's consistent at all times. No matter how bad the snow is coming down, I feel very comfortable that I'll get home safely. I hit a patch of ice, and the car started careening towards the divider on the highway, and I really thought I was going to crash. The car's controls took over, and it saved my life. If I had not been in the car I was in, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The way it makes you feel from massage seats to heated seats it's hard to drive anything else it's fast it's elegant it's sleek it just makes you feel so secure you get behind the wheel of that car and you feel like you're king it's the only car that i will ever drive i've been to newark hackensack three meetings back to back Come to name. Seminar Lombard, big stack of business cards. Stayed at Comfort Suites, got a hot breakfast free. Warehouse inventory, Foreman had a funny story. Big meeting, New Rochelle, told my boss all went well. This spring, stay at any Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, Quality Inn, Sleep Inn, or Clarion Hotel. You'll earn triple choice privileges points or triple airline rewards with your second stay. For reservations, visit choicehotels.com. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. A uh, four-point lead for Oklahoma as we approach the midway point of the first half. And two fabulous freshmen take the stage tonight on ESPN2. Here's a preview of what's in store.
a pair of freshmen yes. that are as talented as any we have seen in a long time. Durant and Odin both tonight on ESPN2. And you better watch it because this will be one of the few times you're going to see because these guys are one and done. You look at Greg <laughs> Odin. I'm telling you, he is 19 because I checked with his grandkids and they verified that. <laughs> so the big fella is, is 19 even though he looks a lot older. Very special, talented group here. And you look at Kevin Durant. I love this guy here. He is a beast. 6'10", can do everything on the basketball, that, basketball floor that you need him to do. Shoots a three, can post up, and he's got some heart, fellas. You see him pounding his chest right there. You got to love that guy right there for Texas. And a reminder, you can also tune in at 8 Eastern for College Game Day from Columbus on ESPN2. As you will see, two lottery picks, no question about it. Two of the top three or four picks in the draft that they both opt to come out doing business tonight. A jumper from the corner by Michael Neal stretches the Oklahoma lead. Michael Neal can get like Little Wayne and make him rain on him real quick. They better get read the scouting report and understand that young man is a catch and shoot guy from three. Kavaloskis hit by Griffin. So Antonis Kavaloskis will head to the line. And he's really an amazing story from Vilnius, Lithuania. It's been three and a half years since he's been home. He spoke with his mom on the phone at Christmas time, and it was the first time in a couple of months that he had spoken with her. His dream is to play professionally and have enough money to bring his family over to live in the United States, but he came over here as a junior college player and actually at Barton Community College hooked up with J.P. Batista, who not only went to Gonzaga, but also now playing professionally. And J.P. Batista taught him how to lift weights, and he put on about 40 pounds as a result of J.P. Batista's counseling. Well, and you just, a lot of times, which is a, that's a great story, Bob, that you share with us, and a lot of times you don't know the motivation of these student athletes and why they come out and play so hard or, or why they want things so bad. And you look at a big man like Kavalaska, he's playing for more than just himself. Trying to play for his family and just the, the intensity in which he goes at is, is impressive. Longar Longar called for the foul on the baseline and actually it was a pretty good foul to give up as Joseph Jones had gotten loose. It's the fifth team foul called against Oklahoma, so it's still a side out as Nate Carter comes back on and Longar will sit down. It is really impressive what the Sooners have been able to do to start this game. One of the loudest arenas in college basketball. You can hear you can hear church mice going on right now, man. It is so quiet in here. They've come in. They've, they've taken the a and first punch. They've established some offensive rhythm against the best te uh, defensive team in the country. Very impressive start on the road. They've delivered a punch of their own. Kavaloskis on the baseline. A chance again, and he converts. A nice entry pass from A.C. Law. Well, a and is really cutting that zone defense up of Oklahoma. I know that's a rule of Coach Capel to go zone on the out-of-bounds defensively, but a and is really picking it apart. And whenever Oklahoma's been man-to-man, -man, they've had much better success. Neal rises and cannot knock that one down. Law runs down the loose ball. But a better pressure on the shot that time. Neal a little bit under duress. That's what he does best. Law finds himself open. He's got it. A triple for A.C. Law. His first field goal. A.C. Law, one of the most complete players in college basketball. He and Aaron Aflalo had the best mid-range games in the college ranks. And right there, he's showing you his range on the jump. Carter can't convert. Taylor Griffin goes over the back and coming up at 4 Eastern on ESPN right after we're done a Big East rematch Curtis Sumter and Villanova meeting Russell Carter at number 21 Notre Dame the Irish take their home court trying to avenge a 102-87 loss at Villanova on January 17th for more information you can log on to ESPN.com I actually called the last meeting between those two teams last week that was on ESPN regional and yeah, I'll tell you, Villanova looks like a top 15 team. And here's a top 10 team with Joseph Jones operating inside. But they really look, they outclassed Notre Dame in that matchup. Very interesting to see what happens in the rematch today. Well, Villanova's a, a, quite a, a ball club because they went to Norman, Oklahoma earlier and put it to the Sooners earlier this year. I mean, very impressive style on the road. And they're a team that hasn't quite found their consistency. 
but they're a dangerous ball club led by Nardi on the point. Corner jumper is buried by Tony Crocker. Back to a three-point lead for Oklahoma. What type of game we thought? Close defensive struggle, but both teams have found the range offensively a little bit earlier than I suspected. But good ball movement, penetration by AM is a loss of shots at the basket. Again, the high low look. Jones saves it, and Kirk runs it down. Oh, what hustle plays by Texas AM. Only seven on the shot clock, and AC Law realizes it, tries a three. Too strong, and the long rebound comes out to Nate Carter. AC Law got a strange release, but it works for him. He throws a knuckleball up there. Typically, on the really good shooters, have that nice backspin. Law throws that knuckleball up, but he's been doing it so much. Kind of like Phil Negro college basketball. Carter penetrates. Hangs with the right hand this time. Can't get it to go. And he lost it out of bounds. A three-point lead for Oklahoma. And in case you're just joining us, we're at Reed Arena here in College Station. A great matchup between Oklahoma and number six, Texas A&M. I'm Bob Oshusen here with Stephen Bardo. And this is a series that has been dominated all time by Oklahoma. Texas A&M is one for 26 when these two teams get together, and yet they find themselves now under Billy Gillespie, one of the top 10 teams in the nation, and a chance for a three-point play for Antonis Kavalaskis as he will try and tie the game. We'll be going back to our studio for an update with Dave Repson. When Reed come back, 7.44 to go in the first half. Kavalaskis tries to tie it in a moment. All right, morning delivery. Well, it looks like your package has arrived around 10.30 a.m. It's pretty standard stuff. But if you need it there even earlier, well, if you add one of these to your overnight package, you can get there even earlier to more places in the U.S. than anyone. It's not morning delivery. It's UPS early morning delivery. Early birds. So, have you been on a lot of blind dates? Um, well, this would make one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. me too. What do you do? I'm a vet. I love animals. Really? Yeah. Where are you from? Michigan. Born and raised. Go blue! NBA League Pass on DirecTV will shatter your expectations with up to 40 games a week of unbelievable action. Basketball like you've never seen it before. Don't miss the NBA League Pass free preview, now playing on channel 751 through 763. Hockey's back like you've never seen before. NHL Center Ice on DirecTV. Your favorite teams, your favorite players, Break out of the ordinary with up to 40 games a week of unbelievable action. Just four payments of $29.75. Act now and score big. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS today. NHL Center Ice and Direct TV. It has been all North Carolina at Arizona. Tyler Hansborough Gets it. here for the Tar Heels hitting down low. North Carolina on top on the road by 22. Other games in action, Kansas leading Colorado by 13 late in the first. And Memphis 11-0 at home, but Southern Miss giving him a game, just a five-point margin, Bob. Well, Dave, a very tough place to play here at Texas A&M, but Jeff Capel's Oklahoma Sooners handling themselves rather well just past the midway point of the first half of our game, although Oklahoma this year, 0 for 4 on the road in what you would consider true road games, but Stephen, they have played very tough teams in those losses. You're talking about in the conference, Texas Tech and Texas, they just lost at Oklahoma State, and their one out of conference true road game was at Alabama. Right, so they, they played very tough competition on the road, and 
Coach Cable yesterday in, in their last practice before the game talked about what they have to do to be successful on the road. Not make turnovers, be tough because AM is going to be physical, and make plays when plays need to be made. And so this ball club of his really has makeshift point guards in Johnson, sometimes Neal. They're not true point guards. And when you go on the road, you have to have point guard play in order to be successful. Excellent hustle play by Josh Carter. Getting back to create the turnover. And after Kavaloskis completed his three-point play to tie it, now a chance to take the lead. Missing inside, though, is Joseph Jones. And Longar, Longar has the rebound. Well, A&M is now starting to soften up the Sooner defense, especially on the interior. Kavaloskis already 3-3 three three in the paint. And Jones, point blank right there, is not going to miss those opportunities too many times. Nate Carter is 0 for 5 from the field so far. He has been held scoreless. Johnson sets Carter up, and he finally connects. Now 1 for 6, that's his first field goal. Although over his last four games, he's been averaging 21 points and 8 rebounds per game. Inside Kavaloskis, right over the top of Carter. Nice high-low action that time. A&M recognizing suitors like to front the post. They love to front the post and they empty the backside out, a &M does, go right over the top. There's no help defense for that, led to Kavaloskis. Kavaloskis is second in the Big 12 at field goal percentage. 59% for the season, and he's already four for four today. And Kavaloskis, I believe, called for the foul. He runs over Michael Neal. And now Kavaloskis in a bit of foul trouble. That's his third. This is showing you the physical nature of this game and look at Kavaloskis. Carter trying to fire over the top. There's no weak side help over here. Good job of emptying out the backside, but bad break right there for AM. Here's a chance for Oklahoma. The game's leading scorer. The only player even close to being in double figures is Kavaloskis. He has 11 to force to sit for the rest of the first half with three fouls. Oklahoma now, they're trying to get the ball to Longar. Surprise, Nate Carter. Nate Dog, as they call him back in San Diego. He's passed up a lot of opportunities. Kind of second-guessing himself right now, but look for him to be involved here on, on this offensive possession. And a foul before the ball is even inbounded. Dominique Kirk called for the personal. That's his first and the 15th foul against the Aggies. Again, we talked about Carter being involved here on the offensive end. We've got the freshman, Brian Davis, guarding him. See if he can take the young fellow to school. Great defense down low that time by Joseph Jones. Held his ground. Longar was too far away from the basket to try and catch the lob. And then when he landed, he basically was forced out of bounds by Jones. And Joseph Jones is a physically imposing figure in the paint. Really knows how to use his body well. As a relentless worker, so you bring your lunch pail when you go up against Joseph Jones because you know you got to go at it all day. Both of these teams, excellent defensive clubs in the half court. And that time, Kirk forced into a tough running one handle, and he couldn't convert. More than what you were saying, Bob, when you play against these two teams and they play so hard, the shots that you normally get are, are usually under duress, or you've had to battle so hard physically to get into position to shoot. But sometimes you're tired and you're rushing your shot. Carter hit inside. Tries again. And this time he goes to the line. Watch Carter. He's not going to be denied on this chance. Nice up fake. Good power to the basket. They could have called a foul on that first opportunity. Doesn't quit on the play. Good job by Carter. Trying to get it to the flow offensively. Nate Carter last season averaged six points, three and a half rebounds after sitting out all of the year before when he transferred from UC Riverside. And he has exploded over the last five or six games for Oklahoma, especially in Big 12 games. I mean, overall this season, he's averaging nine points and four and a half rebounds per game. In Big 12 competition. 18.3 points, 8.3 rebounds. Well, he's tripled his, doubled his, his output in both categories. He's got that senioritis. His last time, last go-around, 
plus the, the injury to Keith Clark, 6'8", Junior, who went out with a knee injury, really hurt Jeff Capel in this ball club. That freed up more minutes for Nate Carter. Nate has taken advantage, and he is really playing with that urgency that you like to see your seniors have. Had an interesting talk with Jeff Capel as well that Jeff Capel was telling us about yesterday. As Kirk rims one off, and Oklahoma has it back, but Jeff Capel... Mm -hmm. Talk to him as a player in a language I'm sure you would understand a little bit more than us. <laughs> Jeff, although he doesn't have any ties to the state of Missouri, he says, yo, fella, you got to show me. <laughs> I'm from the show me state. I know you want to play, but you got to show me what you've got. He said, Coach Cable talked about how Carter would be the most dominant player in practice in summertime and, and preseason workouts. He would always do well. But then when it came to the game, he would be thinking too much. Now he's just going out and enjoying himself, and his production has really elevated. Carter back to the line, shooting one and one. That's the seventh team foul called against Texas A&M. And Brian Davis now has two personals. So Davis checks into the game not long ago to help spell Kavaloskis, who's on the bench with three personal fouls. And now Brian Davis has two fouls. Well, Carter is a, an extremely tough matchup for anybody. 6'6", six, six he's really a power forward, left-handed, and with guys that are undersized, Bob, all their life they're used to scoring against bigger opponents, and so he's crafty, you know, he's smart, he uses his body well, and like I said, I figured he would take Brian Davis, the freshman, try to abuse him a little bit. Seniors lick their lips when they see these freshmen coming off the bench. They gotta make them pay. So Carter knocks down a couple at the line. And Oklahoma with a four-point lead with 4.42 to go in the first half. Uh, you listen to the crowd. <laughs> you can't really hear them. Oklahoma's done a fantastic job of imposing their will early. They've gotten the shots they've wanted on their offensive end. Defensively, they've been solid. And find themselves in a great position here to start the basketball game. Sloan penetrates but can't get the roll. And Longar with a strong rebound. Michael Neal slows things down. Try to continue to pound the basket. Longar with a kick out, a deflection, and a steal. Numbers for the Aggies. Sloan lays it off. Broken up by Neal. Well, like we talked about, two strong defensive clubs, so when you do get an opportunity, there's a little bit of rushing going on right now. Stroke by Josh Carter as he hits the three and makes it a one-point game. He has six. Josh Carter, the younger brother of Warren Carter, who plays at University of Illinois, doesn't like to be shown up by his big brother, who had a pretty good game this past week against Indiana. Another steal. Carter in transition. Can't get it to go. Bobby Mays has it knocked away, but it goes off Mays and out of bounds. Back and forth we go, Oklahoma with a one-point lead here at Reed Arena in College Station. And you can take this. Winter, a time to raise the heat. But as anticipation builds, the question remains, how to exceed expectations? Patience, because a game breaks down in time. Be wary of the minutes, but it's the seconds that change everything. For the moment will fall. So take the risk and play like there's no tomorrow. The NCAA Winter Championships on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. The dub here in full effect with Trey and this why. What time is it? I don't know. Time to unpimp the auto. Oh, snap. German engineering in the house. The Volkswagen GTI. 2007 Automobile of the Year. Mmm, double beef Fiesta salsa, so good. Delicious, huh? And these grilled stuffed burritos are only a buck ninety-nine. All this flavor for only a buck ninety-nine? Mm -hmm. No way. Like how he told us he's going out on a date with Carmen Electra. We're just going bowling. Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Pete. Do you like my dress? That'll do. It's true. Taco Bell's Big Tasty Grilled Stuffed Burrito with double the beef, three cheeses, and grilled to go to get unbelievable taste for an unbelievable price. How's she going to bowl in that? Think outside the bun.
Introducing Chase Freedom. It feels like no other credit card in the world. And it works like no other card, too. Feel free to choose cash back. And then change to points. And then change again, all with the same card and without losing a thing. That's freedom. Chase Freedom. Get it free at chase.com slash freedom. Dave Ramson in the studio. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, we'll update you on some other Big 12 action. Colorado at Kansas. That's usually a predictable result. Tom Brennan, Doug Gottlieb will join me as well to tell us what's wrong with Arizona. And Bob, we will tell you why you can't spell Connecticut without NIT. It is getting ugly in the nutmeg state. We'll tell you about it at the half. <laughs> Uh, Dave Repson oh. just crossed himself right off of Jim Calhoun's <laughs> Christmas card list. <laughs> and oh, Oklahoma something. and Texas A&M in a tussle here in Aggieland. And uh, Billy Gillespie has been such a breath of fresh air for fans here at Texas A&M. This is a basketball program. Remember, the year before he arrived, they were 0-16 in the, the Big 12. Right. They go from to 8-8 eight and eight to 10-6, and six, and now... They are about to go to the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive year for the first time ever. They've never been to two straight NCAA tournaments. It's amazing. Well, in the turnaround, we talked about Billy Gillespie has gotten his guys to buy in to the philosophy of hard work. And it, again, we talked about earlier, it sounds cliche-ish, but these guys work as hard as anybody in the country. And the thing that I love that he does, Bob, He's able to tell these young men exactly who they are, what your game is. A lot of guys don't like hearing that, that they have limitations in their game. But what he does, he promises them, if you listen to what I say, I can put you in a position to be successful. And guys love to be successful. Billy Gillespie is truthful with these guys. He works them hard on the court. Off the court, he puts his arm around them, and that's the, the kind of uh, – play that he has with his guys a love-hate relationship they hate him on the court but they love him because he, he allows them to be successful and Oklahoma still dominant in this season series as Billy Gillespie's never beaten Oklahoma two big 12 teams that they have never beaten Kansas and Oklahoma and Law hustles after the loose ball keeps it alive for the Aggies and an offensive foul call Joseph Jones bowls over Longa. <laughs> Look at Coach Gillespie. He's, he's doing the enactment on the sideline. And he just got teed up. As we take another look, you be the judge. But not only does this play result in Jones picking up a personal foul, but also Gillespie picks up the tee. Oh, uh, looked like Longa just lost his footing. There really wasn't a lot of contact at the basket. <laughs> you got to love that right there. You know what I mean, Bob? You got a technical, but that, that's, that's great stuff right there. So Nate Carter will shoot the tees. And I'll say one thing for Billy Gillespie. In that one instance, he got the crowd back involved more so than any other sequence we've had. Here in the first half, we were talking about the fact that Oklahoma did a great job quieting the crowd down. Right. Well, the technical might cost his team two points, but the 12th man is now going to be a factor for that. It's two minutes and 49 seconds. Definitely. And what it also does, it calls attention to the referees in terms of that type of play. There's a lot of contact in this game. It didn't appear there was enough contact in that situation to warrant a foul either way. So, Gillespie trying to get his point across, and not pleased with the way his team has come out this afternoon. As we saw early in the game, benched his five starters. And if you have a lack of effort, Billy Gillespie, you're going to be sitting next to him. That foul on Jones, by the way, was his second. So Jones playing with two personal fouls. Actually, they take him out, put him on the bench. Kavalaska's already on the bench with three personal fouls. Carter bumped by Law. AC Law called for the foul. That will put Carter back at the line. Well, AC Law trying to provide the help defensively. Gets caught reaching in the cookie jar right there. I don't know how they think that can't be a foul. Looked like it was an arm wrestling match by AC Law and Nate Carter right there. 
Offensive player is going to win that one every time. That's Law's first. And Carter gets to shoot a pair. Nate Carter, an 85% free throw shooter. Oh, and he struggled from the field. One, only one of seven so far, but he's getting his rhythm at the line. What good scores do. They find a way to get back on track. A couple at the line for Nate Carter. And a game that right now is on target to be played somewhere in the low 60s. That's exactly what you would expect when these two teams get together. And when that's the case, Stephen, all of a sudden a five-point lead in a game like this just feels more significant than it does, say, in a game where the two teams you know are going to be playing somewhere in the mid-80s. That's exactly right. And each possession is so critical in the situation where you're not going to get that many. See a rare offensive opportunity on the glass for a and and they cannot connect. And then Pompey both inside, unable to convert, as now Jones and Kavalaskis are on the bench and a bit of foul trouble. Kavalaskis definitely in foul trouble. He has three. And I'm sure that impacted Billy Gillespie's decision to sit down Joseph Jones with two personal fouls. A lot of times a and players, particularly Jones and Kevaloskis, they play so physical, the shot clock is winding down right here. Shot clock at three, down to two. Do they realize it? Godbold just gets it off. No, it's a shot clock violation. Good. It seemed like David Godbold was the only player on the floor that realized that the shot clock was down inside of five. Good defensive patience that time by a and &M. Didn't get antsy, didn't try to go for a foul. They stayed solid in their principles, forcing a shot clock violation. Down to the last minute and 15 seconds of the first half. Brian Davis still in the game, playing with two personal fouls. Pompey gets caught. Carter, he is fouled on his way to the basket. And a reminder that freshmen are in the forefront tonight on ESPN2. Big 12 action. Baylor taking on Texas, so you'll get a chance to see Kevin Durant. That game starts at 6. And college game day live from Columbus. And then at 9 Eastern, Greg Oden and number 5 Ohio State hosting Michigan State. Both of these games available in high definition later on tonight. So you what, that Michigan State ball club that's going into Columbus vastly improved. Drew Neitzel picking up the pace offensively and Raymar Morgan. If you haven't heard of him, one of the better freshmen in the country coming off injury, but very talented swing player from Tom Izzo. In Carter hits a pair at the line. And Derek Rowland, a freshman from Dallas, comes back on. So with one minute to go in the first half, you'd have to call this a very successful half for Oklahoma and a tough place to play with a three-point lead in the ball. Well, the Sooners, they know how to play on the road. They dropped their last one at Oklahoma State, which is one of the toughest places in the country to play. So these guys are going to battle. They're going to stay in it. And they haven't turned the ball over that much here early. Speaking of battling, a tie-up. The crowd thought that Neal came in and committed a personal foul, and it looked as if he gave Brian Davis a pretty good shot to the side of the head to create the tie-up. <laughs> The possession arrow belongs to Texas A&M, so they get the ball back. But that was a pretty nasty tussle for there not to have been a foul call. But this is what conference play is all about. Get the rock. Go get it. If you got to get on the floor, go get it. You got to throw people off of you. Get the ball. Good job by both teams sensing the urgency of the possession. You can see the head of Brian Davis jerk pretty hard to the left as he took a shot to the right cheek from Neal, and no foul was called. And to make matters worse, it happens right in front of the Texas A&M bench. And here's an interesting move. Kavalaskis comes back in with 30 seconds to go in the first half, playing with three personal fouls. But Jones has struggled on the interior. They want Kavalaskis maybe to find his way to, towards the basket. The jump hook blocked by Longard goaltender. And quickly, Kavalaskis heads back to the bench. With 22 seconds to go in the first half. And a timeout has been called by Oklahoma. So Jeff Capel is going to draw up the first half's final possession. We'll come back right after this. Want another word for temptation? 
try chocolate. We all love it. But what if we couldn't have it? That was reality for people trying to eat less sugar. Until candy companies partnered with Cargill to create a new generation of sugar-free chocolate. Our expertise in sugar replacers improved the taste and sweetened their candy sales by taking the sugar out and leaving the desire in. This is how Cargill works with customers. Oklahoma has not hit a field goal in about six and a half minutes, but they're about to get the final shot here in the first half. Well, if you're Oklahoma right now, you're going to look at Nate Carter. Although he struggled from the field at one of eight, he's found a, he's found a stroke from the free throw line. Either Nate Carter going to the basket, a cross screen on the baseline for Longar, or Neal coming off the backside for a three-point opportunity. Very good chance the Sooners go to the dressing room with that worst a one-point lead. Down to 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Johnson dribbling with five seconds to go. He penetrates. Can't get the kiss. A loose ball with one second to go. Corralled by Lowe. That shot no good even if it goes. And that will do it for the first half. So basically the game that we expected. Low scoring. Both teams under 30 points in the first half. Only seven points total scored in the last six minutes and 15 seconds. Oklahoma with a one-point lead at the break. Now let's send it to Dave Rebson with the UPS Halftime Report back in our ESPN studios. Dave. Thank you, Bob. So A&M 13-0 at home, but that perfect mark very much in jeopardy against Jeff Capel Sooners. Welcome in the UPS Halftime Report. Our crew still undefeated at home. Tom Brennan, Doug Gottlieb, what do you think of the first half? You know what's amazing? Not one basket in the last six and a half minutes. You know what? If you're playing against Oklahoma uh, or Texas A&M, you're the refrigerator, and there are them little strawberry magnets that are all over you, you know, with the pictures on them and the recipes. You just can't get rid of them. They're unbelievable. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we were both talking about this during the game, how much Jeff Capel has gotten this team to buy in and how much this team has improved since the first time we saw them when they lost right. to Villanova, sitting in these exact same seats. I think that's the first thing. And the second thing is that as we get ready to watch the Carolina-Arizona uh, highlights, I had a bet with a buddy that the win of Carolina and Arizona, the winner, just their point total, would be more than the combined point totals of these two teams in this game. Right? That was a gentleman's bet. Yes. Of course. Uh, we'll see if the Sooners can pull it off. Haven't beat anyone in the top 100 in the RPI, so this would be a huge win for them. Let's keep it in the Big 12. Colorado, 23 straight losses in Lawrence. Last time they won there, 1983, when the Islanders were sports' greatest dynasty. That's Brandon Rush hitting its 10-5 Jayhawks. More for Rush. Islanders, that's hockey, right? That's hockey. They still it was a long time ago. Okay. That team still does exist. Uh, 15 in the first half for Brandon Rush. And it's Julian Wright. Uh, who told you about Julian Wright? Yeah. Whoop. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Julian. Oh. See how that one ended, huh? It's like the reverse Jim Jim. Come up by 10, the anti Jim Jim. Coming up, a marquee matchup today. A late morning battle in the desert. We'll tell you. Which team missed its wake-up call? That's next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Volkswagen GTI, Automobile Magazine's 2007 Automobile of the Year. Yo, we dumb. Got Mike in the house. What's up? And his tricked out vip. Yo, Mike, you want to stomp him this thing? Let me hear you say, bot. What? V-Dub holding it down on the engineering tip, y'all. Yeah. The Volkswagen GTI. 2007 Automobile of the Year. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge to help you find your perfect flat panel TV. I pledge to watch football only on Saturday and Sunday. I pledge to set up your HD right. And Monday. I pledge to show this off to my girlfriends. And sometimes Thursday. I pledge to help you every step of the way. I pledge to be the house where all the kids want to hang out. For the ultimate viewing experience, we pledge to help you get the best picture for your HD TV. Plus, no interest till 2010. That's HD done right at Best Buy. Husk, Huskers. No. Huskers with a, with a Z? No. Ooh, a uh, Husk guy. Take him. How about with that heart, hus, heart, curve? No. Brasky guy, brasky pants, brasky man. Bet nobody's, nope. somebody's got that. You know what, I'm, I need to go write some more and I'll, I'll be back. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, how about Nebraska? Sorry, dude. Uh, Nebraska. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Josh Carter with 10 points in the first half. Actually, it's Nate Carter. It's the other team. 29 28. Oklahoma, I'm talking Texas A&M. Good recovery. Yeah, well, it's important to keep your Carter straight. North Carolina, Arizona. No Brandon Wright, no Marcus Ginyard for North Carolina. No problem. Ray Sean Terry hitting there. 11 4 Tar Heels after the free throw. And it's Terry, the emphatic putback. Tar Heels on top by 17. That's when you kind of know if you're the home team when three guys are jumping over your head to dunk it in. But I thought they were ahead too early. Don't get too big a lead too early on the road. Is that what you've been saying last two weeks? Yes, no, it doesn't always happen. 50% oh. of the time. Definitively 50% of the time. Wayne Ellington throwing down there. 80 to 60. So I think it's safe to assume, guys, Arizona's going to lose for the fifth time in its last seven games. What's going on here, TV? Well, what's going on here today, David, is they say simply did not show up. They just didn't come out to play. How can you not be ready to play against North Carolina? What is wrong in general is they just don't guard you. The teams that guard in that league, Washington State and UCLA, have proven how important it is and how it leads to championships. This is uh, amazing how underachieving this team really is. Maybe we've just overestimated how good their talent is. I think that's maybe the thing, is, is that we've overestimated out of high school, Mustafa Shakur, number one point guard in the country. Chase Bunger's a marvelous talent, but he's yet to get in a defensive stance. I mean, he makes, look, he makes Adam Morris and look like Michael Cooper defensively. <laughs> That's how bad he is at the defensive end. And their interior defense, Alex Stevenson, Deion Thompson, Tyler Hansworth, they're playing without Brandon Wright, and all their interior players are in double figures. They're soft in the interior. they got poor point guard play. Arizona's in trouble. I mean, they're going to make the NCAA tournament. This could be another early exit for loot. This team just doesn't have it. Depth is an issue as well, and it continues to be a problem for Arizona in this one. Again, as soon as it goes final, we will let you know. But in the meantime, I want to update you on some other action, including Michigan going to Indiana. D.J. White and the Hoosiers trying to hold the home serve. Roderick Wilmot, the deep three. Hoosiers eight first half threes. And then they pounded it inside to start the second half. Well, D.J. White has really improved. I mean, he's taking his time. They got the ball inside as Michigan got the game close. And once they got the ball inside, Michigan folded like a house of cards. And Michigan is right where they were last year, exactly in the same position, where they really need to come up with some quality, quality wins. They need to beat somebody on the road. Or, they're, again, they're going to be on the outside looking in. Did not do it today as they lose by 15. Later tonight, more from the Big Ten. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV, ESPN2. HD, Greg Oden, and number five, Ohio State, host Michigan State. About this score, guys, Southern Miss on the road at Memphis, where the Tigers are unbeaten, 55 to 49 in favor of Larry Eustachie's crew. Well, you know how tough it is to get a, a, a scatter report on Larry Eustachie's crew. <laughs> what, 33 guys now in 30 three years? But we don't, forget names in the back. You just, all right, that guy, we think he can shoot, we have no idea. It's the idea, too, that when you're that much better than everybody else in your league, and I think Memphis is clearly that much better than everybody else in their league, that one of those days you're just going to not have it, and somebody's going to sneak up on you. But it's not over yet. No, still some time to go here, about six minutes. So we will not eulogize <laughs> Memphis just yet. You may start writing up the eulogy for UConn. They may be done NCAA tournament-wise. We'll show you what happened against Providence next. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? All right, you're a small. The dub here in full effect with Trey and this why. What time is it? I don't know. Time to unpimp the auto. Oh, snap. German engineering in the house. The Volkswagen GTI. 2007 Automobile of the Year. Millions of people watch me cook, but I watch what I eat. Still, when my doctor checked my cholesterol, it was slightly higher than we'd like. We talked about statins. A good option. For me, he chose Zetia. It works differently. 
Statins work mainly with the liver. Zetia works in the digestive tract like some other medicines. But Zetia is unique in the way it helps block the absorption of cholesterol that comes from food. Zetia, along with a healthy diet, lowered bad cholesterol by an average of 30 points. That's 18%. It complements what I'm already doing. Zetia may not be right for people who have ever had liver problems, are nursing or pregnant, or may become pregnant. Your doctor will decide if Zetia is right for you. Unexplained muscle pain or weakness could be a sign of a rare but serious side effect and should be reported to a doctor right away. Common side effects included tiredness and stomach pain. Three, two... Cook it healthy. Ask your doctor if Zetia is right for you. Zetia, a different way to help fight cholesterol. The critics have spoken. Letters from Iwo Jima is the best film of 2006. Nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Director Clint Eastwood. Winner of the Golden Globe Award and the Critics' Choice Award for Best Picture of the Year. Four stars, a triumph. Flags of Our Fathers and Letters from Iwo Jima is one complete masterpiece. Letters from Iwo Jima, rated R, now playing. Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. Sean White takes to the pipe. Here comes the senior Walker. The horde of challengers eager to end his golden run. Then the leaders of Snowcross Pack must take on the longest, oh. hardest track of the year for a shot at the title. Winter X Games 11 takes flight tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. We want to update you on the golf. Brent Snedeker continues to be a great story. 12 under par. He is leading at the Buick Invitational. The story, though, is Tiger Woods making a move. Three birdies started the day. Seven shots back. He's now three shots back, looking for his seventh straight. Why isn't Charles Howell III, Oklahoma State alum? Why isn't he the story? Tiger Woods is the story. Okay. Lurking. He's All right, lurking. Fine. All right, fine. Editorially, <laughs> Tiger Woods is the story. You'd like to take that up. We can do it at another time. Providence and UConn. Big game for UConn, trying to halt the three-game skid. Wamey Efejuku for Providence. That's nice. pretty. And I think an equally big game for Providence because it really is a statement game. They beat a good team on the road, and they, uh, you know, now they're four and three in the league. Great win for Timmy Welch. That's Efejuku there. They were down 11 in the first half. They went on a 16-0 run to start the second. Shot 63 percent in the second half, and they hand UConn its fourth. Straight loss, 84 to 72. Extra home game coming on the schedule at Gamble in March. Cincinnati and Georgetown. Patrick Ewing on hand to watch his son, Patrick Ewing Jr. Jeff Green misses, doesn't miss there. He had 17, Hoyas by 11, and then is the aforementioned Mr. Ewing. Pretty good outside shooter compared, compared to his genes. I thought he'd be a round the bucket guy, but he's made a lot of threes for Georgetown this year. Now Hoy is up by nine. They shot 57% in this game. Green succeeds the first time this time as the Hoyas win it by 15. He walked three times or twice on that move. <laughs> <laughs> Texas A&M in a battle at home to say the least as it is a one point lead for Oklahoma. Back to College Station next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Puerto Rico. Explore beyond the shore. Give me the usual. Raw. That's all I got here. These are tough, right? Yeah. It's okay, Scratch. This guy's good. Enjoy. <laughs> Slazenger Raw. Made to be pounded. <laughs> This. Is it for all of us? Yeah. Sixteen hundred for a week? We can do that. Oh yeah. The magic.
magic begins when you realize you can afford a Disney vacation. Other affordable packages all year long. Visit DisneyWorld.com slash affordable. Is the IRS ruining your life? Are IRS penalties and interest compounding daily? Stop the cycle now. Hello, I'm John Harris, president of J.K. Harris & Company, the nation's largest tax representation firm. IRS problems have a way of ruining every aspect of your life if you let them. They don't go away on their own. The IRS can attach your wages, your pension, your savings, even your social security check. If penalties and interest have made your IRS problem go from bad to worse, don't despair. Call us now. Our former IRS agents and tax professionals have successfully negotiated settlements, saving our clients millions of dollars. If you owe the IRS back taxes, don't wait another minute. Call J.K. Harris now. Meet with a J.K. Harris consultant today and see if you too can qualify to significantly reduce your tax debt. Call the IRS experts at J.K. Harris now for your free confidential tax settlement analysis. 1-800-583-6651. A fresh 20 minutes on the clock, a one-point lead, though, for Oklahoma. And the whiteout, strangely silent here at Heal Arena. Hi again, everyone. Bob Buschusen and Stephen Bardo set for the start of the second half. And it was not the first half that I think these AM fans expected. No, it was really uh, an impressive start by OU coming out here, establishing themselves on the offensive end. And defensively, it has been the matchup that we expect. Well, certainly the highlights, exactly what you would expect. These two teams play great physical defense. Well, you see the bodies collapsing on Carter as he's trying to get to the well. Not going to be easy. Good job. Help side defensively. And Davis, the freshman, picked up on that one. And you look on the a side offensively. AK, as they call him, has been sound around the basket. Beneficiary of a dime right there. And then that's just good body position with the pass over the top. Texas A&M holding Oklahoma to 39% from the field. If they keep that number intact, it would be the 31st consecutive opponent that they have held under 50%. However, it was at the 17-16 mark of the first half, the last time that Texas A&M held a lead. They led 4-2. As you can see, Oklahoma's playing every bit the solid defense that Texas A&M is. They really are, and doing a fine job of really honing in on AC Law who has struggled only one of five from the field. So they've kept AC in check. See what they do here in the second half. Just begin the second half in possession. And the crowd trying to get the AM Aggies back into it. Johnson sets up Crocker. A wide open three. And AC Law with the weak side rebound. Quickly up ahead to Kavalaskis. And he lost it out of bounds and goes hard to the floor. Yeah, but you, you like that if you're Coach Gillespie. They want to try to get some early buckets. Cavalos is running the floor well. That's a tough pass to handle though if you're 16. It's a tough pass to handle if you're Jerry Rice. <laughs> oh, Rice makes that one easy. <laughs> Nate Carter leading Oklahoma in points and rebounds. And he basically found a way to score 10 points in the first half. Only one field goal. He was eight eight at the line and he is rejected inside again and this is the reverse and the rebound falls down to Joe Jones I think Nate Carter is trying to do like Moses Malone and pad his rebounding stat he's had a couple of point blank opportunities and just could not convert Kavalaskis to the baseline that's his first miss he's now five for six from the field although if you're Oklahoma and I were to tell you that 21 minutes into the game, Nate Carter would be one for 10 from the field. Would you think you'd have a one-point lead? Definitely not. Just by the way AM really suffocates you on defense, but Oklahoma's found a way with, mainly through this big man right here. He's played well on this end of the floor. Long gone. Is rejected by Jones. And him looking for that early offensive opportunity. Nice down screen to free up Law. 
Law dumps it down to Cavalaskis. He converts, plus the foul. A chance for a three-point play for Antonis Cavalaskis. AK moves so well without the basketball. You see right there, creating the space so Law has the, the lane to drop off the pass. Good job of two-man basketball by AC Law and Cavalaskis. I just like saying it, Cavalaskis. Got quiet in here again, but he gets noisy after he completes the three-point play. So 16 points now for Cavalaskis. He only averages 12 per game. We see right now a &M trying to turn it up defensively. And that's a, that's a mismatch right there with Dominique Kirk on Nate Carter that the Sooners may try to exploit. First lead for Texas A&M since it was 4-2. Crocker ties the game once again. The true freshman, Tony Crocker. Crocker has a lot of confidence. He's had some big time scoring games early in the year. And conference play like it does to most freshmen. And go on the road in conferences, taking them to the wilderness. You don't know what you're going to get. He's starting to adjust, however, now. Jones, nice move on the baseline. Jones realizing he has at least four inches over Carter on the baseline. Takes his time and gets the shot he wants. Crocker thought about a three and now thinks better of it. Has Kevaloskis caught on a switch? Draws some contact, no call. He got Kevaloskis to commit. Jeff Capel with arms outstretched. Well, he thought that that absolutely should have been a foul. Well, Crocker hasn't been in the Big 12 long enough to where he's gonna get that call. They typically don't give that to freshmen. As a true freshman, Tony Crocker very much holding his own in the Big 12. This is where he ranks in terms of other Big 12 freshmen. And he's in the top seven. Steals free throw percentage points and rebounds. Well, he's a young man that has good size at the two guard position at six foot five. Very confident. Coach Capel is very high on this young man. And that's really what Paul playing good basketball is, is all confident. High low game. As the roles are reversed, normally it's AC Law going to Kevaloskis and not the other way around. This afternoon, Oklahoma has lost all of their defensive intensity when they go to the zone defense. AM has really cut them up on each of those possessions. Largest lead for Texas AM. Longar puts it on the floor. And Johnson resets 10 on the shot clock. And he is fouled. Take a look at what Texas A&M loves to do in the high-low set. Come out right now. Go ahead and roll the tape. And this is going to be against the zone, but you see right here, Kavaloskis and Jones love to operate here at the top. But right there, Sneaks back door is AC Law. There's no communication on the back side. And it's usually inverted where AC Law is on the perimeter. But that time he sneaks behind the defense. Good recognition by the senior guard. That last foul called against Joe Jones. That's his third. High low game inside it's Carter. And he is bumped. Nate Carter works his way back to the line. And give Carter credit. When you don't have it going from the field, good players, seniors, scorers find a way to put some points on the board, and he just keeps getting himself to the line. Well, Nate Dog, as they call him in San Diego, he's a junkyard dog right now, getting it done in the paint, drawing all kinds of contact. And as you said, Bob, finding the stroke from the line. The shooting average is definitely going to go down this afternoon, but his point total may stay the same, and he can continue to get to the free throw line. He now has 11 points, and nine of his 11 have been scored at the free throw line. He's nine for nine at the stripe, 11 points overall. He's one for 10 from the field as and what, Griffin comes back up. And what I like about what we're seeing from Carr's performance this afternoon, with so many guys, if they're not scoring, everything else in their game drops off. But not with Nate Carter. He has seven rebounds in addition to his 12 points here. 10 for 10 at the line. Jones with three personals is on the bench for Texas A&M. Kavaloskis stays in the game. He's playing with three personals. Inside, tough catch. Carter somehow manages 
to make the catch. Check that Pompey and lay it home. So Marlon Pompey converts inside. Marlon Pompey appears to be playing on one leg, really favoring that right knee that he has banded. But Pompey, like Dominique Kirk, one of the blue guys on your club, Bob, that you love to have. He'll play defense, they'll do all the dirty work, and they score when they get the opportunity. Offensive rebound, and Godbold is right there. Uh, Griffin at 235, cleared the path right there. Ball came right back to Godbold. He didn't have to do much with it. Again, the high-low. This time, Pompey feeds it inside, and Kavaloskis is fouled on the floor. 15-13, remaining in regulation time. A two-point game, Marlon Pompey stretching the lead a moment ago for the Aggies. But it seems like Oklahoma continues to respond. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. I've been to Newark, Hackensack, three meetings back-to-back. -back. Conference in Maine, put faces to name. Seminar in Lombard, big stack of business cards. Stayed at Comfort Suites, got a hot breakfast free. Warehouse inventory, Foreman had a funny story. Big meeting, New Rochelle, told my boss all went well. This spring, stay at any Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, Quality Inn, Sleep Inn, or Clarion Hotel. You'll earn triple choice privileges points or triple airline rewards with your second stay. For reservations, visit choicehotels.com. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. I see some defense. Ah! Let's look at that again. Play that again. Look, look, look. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 feels so good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Even the mascot is, oh. look at the mascot. Oh, he's like, oh, he is oh, tight. He's oh, like, no. I am so sad. Oh, oh no. <laughs> he, he is too through with you. NCAA March Madness 2007. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. Oklahoma only two for eight from the field here in the second half still only down by two though and what a rich tradition for Oklahoma basketball this is actually the 100th season of Oklahoma basketball there's the first team picture back in 1907 1908 over the years Oklahoma has won 20 conference titles they've made four trips to the final four of course Billy Tubbs their all-time win leader as a coach Wayman Tisdale a three-time All-American they have gone to postseason play 25 consecutive years, the longest streak in Division I college basketball. Well, and they've had tremendous talent through the years. Think of Ricky Grace, Stacy King, Hollis, don't call me Fisher Price. You know, some tremendous ball players that have come through that program. And many people think of Oklahoma as solely a football school. But right there, that shows you what kind of tradition they have on the hard. Well, that's the tradition that Billy Gillespie is trying to buck here at Texas A&M. But this is now not just a football school, but very much a basketball school. And Billy Gillespie, of course, has now won back-to-back -back Big 12 Coach of the Year honors and has his team in the top 10. A.C. Law. Along the baseline, Kavalaskis off the feed from Law. And Kavalaskis is now 7 of 8 from the field. He has 18 and leads all scorers. That's why AC Law is so good. We just saw right there. And Law the rebound in traffic. Watch him set up his teammates. Law pulls up. Too strong. The rebound caroms out. And in transition is Gutball. Nice, nice job defensively. Kavaloskis hustles back to get on Godbolt. Interesting defensive matchups here. Kirk, Dominique Kirk guarding the taller Nate Carter. Kevaloskis guarding the smaller Godbolt. Godbolt for three. In and out. And the rebound to Jones. Jones and Kavaloskis both playing with three fouls. Some high low action. The first big man down. Hits the block hard. Kavaloskis right back out to Carter. And just Carter the sophomore. Knocks down a triple. And the largest lead and then some for Texas A&M. The Aggies by seven. This is the time of game when Oklahoma has to dig down and find some leadership from their backcourt to get them in the right offensive set. Godbold sets up Griffin. He knocks it down. That's a big shot for Oklahoma. And Taylor Griffin, another sophomore, steps up big. 
See, that's the toughness Coach Caper was talking about yesterday to his club. It doesn't necessarily always come in a physical nature. Toughness in terms of making the right play when it needs to be made on the road. Good job by Godbolt and Griffin. Kavaloskis reverses. What a move by Kavaloskis. He has 20. Neal looks to answer quickly. It's knocked away. Deflected off an a and player. Out of bounds. This is what's so impressive about this Texas A&M ball club. When you, the big fella is hungry, feed him the rock. Seeing there, he, t he feels the pressure on the backside, goes away from the defense. Cavaloskis is feeling it this afternoon. And Billy Gillespie will give him what you have to imagine would be a brief rest as Marlon Pompey has come back on. Johnson for three. In and out. Another good-looking perimeter shot for Oklahoma that just won't go down. Well, and this is where AM starts to cut you up. Because if you go down to them eight or ten points in the second half, they're very difficult to come back against because of their defensive nature. Griffin fouls Pompey, so Pompey goes to the line. And coming up at four, it's a rematch from a game about a week ago. Curtis Sumter and Villanova taking on Russell Carter at number 21. Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, back at home, trying to avenge a loss suffered at the Pavilion at Villanova. Again, for more information, you can log on to ESPN.com and the tip in that game scheduled for 408 Villanova and Notre Dame. Pompey knocks one down. All of a sudden, I felt like I needed to get quiet. Like I might distract Marlon Pompey at the line. That's how quiet it gets in here when an Aggie shoots a free throw. Really something. And going back to that Notre Dame ball club going up against very tough Villanova squad. People in South Bend aren't going to like me for saying this, but very difficult situation for that point guard, Kyle McInerney, to be kicked out of school yes. based on one infraction. Very, uh, very surprised to see that. I thought this was the business of student athletes being the second chance in higher education. Not a lot of higher education in that decision in my regard. That's a very fair point. Offensive rebound, speaking of second chances, kept alive by Josh Carter. Field goal percentages in this half, only 25% from the field, 3 for 12 for Oklahoma. Texas A&M, though, 7 for 9. A.C. Law, his shot blocked by Johnson. Austin Johnson went up high and challenged A.C. Law. And now Johnson fields Neal for 3. He's got it! Michael Neal in transition, a triple. That's a big sequence for the Sooners. They're back within five. Those, again, are the type of plays that Coach Cape was looking for his young club. Austin Johnson starts it with the block party on A.C. Law and then makes the correct decision, Bob, on who to hit in the fast break, and that's Neal open at the three. Sloan connects, so the freshman with a bucket, and it's a seven-point lead for AM once again. Austin Johnson, a little herky-jerky with the rock. But he's getting it done this afternoon, getting the ball where it needs to be in crucial situations and handling the pressure well. Griffin, a deep jumper. Gets the roll. Oh, it took a long time for Taylor Griffin, but he connects. That's a long two. And it's a five-point lead once again for AM. We need to check birth certificates. That looks like a birthday shot right there. <laughs> Hit every piece of the rim it could. A.C. Law, rejected by Longar. And it's out of bounds off Texas A&M. A five-point lead for the Aggies, but Austin Jensen with a block at one end and a feed to Neal at the other. And Oklahoma hanging in there with the number six Aggie. Master, how do I find enlightenment? Yellow Book, the more choices one has, the easier the quest. Yellow Book is the key to it all? To find the answer, one must look inside. Yellow Book, not the other book. 1-800-YB-YELLOW. Hey, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> Me too. All right, here's what I want to talk about today. Working in an office. I don't think we've talked about that on the show yet. Anybody remember? I didn't think so. Okay, so here's what made me think about it. What if you're a neat freak and then you're forced to share an office with someone who's a, a pig? You know what I mean, Francis. Come on. It's just a, a term. My life is far from ordinary. That's why my card is American Express. The true power and beauty of plasma is often hidden, unable to be captured.
Hitachi original technologies unleash the most lifelike color and detail in plasma. Introducing the world's highest resolution 42-inch plasma HDTV only from Hitachi. have discovered a secret to head-turning hair. It's Head & Shoulders Shampoo. Head & Shoulders starts at the scalp and contains six times the moisturizers for healthy, beautiful hair that's 100% flake-free. No wonder 80% of Cosmo readers would choose Head & Shoulders for head-turning hair. See more at headturninghair.com. How did you become such a great master? Yellow Book. Everyone is searching for something. Say pizza makes you happy. Type in what and where. Infinite information. Yellowbook.com. Quick, local, reliable. Updating on Arkansas and Alabama. The Hogs won by 27 when they played in Fayetteville. Similar story early on in Tuscaloosa. Stephen Hill with the finish. It's a 10-point lead for Arkansas, Bob. So Alabama struggling on the road, or at home rather, against Arkansas. And Texas A&M at a tussle here with Oklahoma at Reed Arena. Bob Shoes and Stephen Bardo. And this is the game we expected right now on pace to be played somewhere in the low 60s. And again, Oklahoma leads this series all time. 25 to 1, 10 and 1 are the Sooners here at College Station. Well, Oklahoma's been the bully in this situation. Just bullying A&M home and away, that's an incredible stat. When you look at the balance of this conference and AM trying to exercise the demons this afternoon, and despite a slow start, they seem to have caught their rhythm offensively. It also illustrates where the AM program was for a long time. They were the doormat of the Big 12. The year before Mark Gillespie arrived, they don't win a game all season in the conference. And then he takes them to 8-8 eight and, eight and then 10-6. And six. And last year, their first trip to the NCAAs in, two, in 19 years. And that second round loss to LSU on the last second three. Boy, they really uh, caught the attention of, of America with the way that they play. And it's carried over to this season. Kavaloskis the rebound. And AC Law at the other end. Can't convert. Jones tip won't go. And a run-out opportunity, a two-on-one. Mays and Crocker. Mays takes it himself. Can't get the roll. Great transition defense as getting back and being very disruptive. And now Jeff Capel is called for a tee. Yeah, Capel didn't like the call, but I'm telling you what, he should be more upset at Mays on the two-on-one. Bobby Mays had an opportunity to drop a sweet dime over the Crocker would have been an easy deuce. He goes a little out of control and costs his team an opportunity. So Carter goes to the line to shoot the technical free throws. And let's take another look at the play by Carter and the reaction by the coach. <laughs> and he's obviously upset that there's no call, but again, Bobby Mays, the freshman has played with Tony Crocker in the backcourt in high school. And you wonder as well, earlier on in the game, when Billy Gillespie was teed up, does that automatically make the officials a little more predisposed to call a team the opposing coach and, in effect, even things up? It, it could, Bob, but in that situation, uh, Coach Capel was very animated and was trying to get the attention of John Higgins for the no call down there on the uh, exchange. So. I think it does equal it up a little bit, but also Cable is still jawing him over there. So trying to get some fire into his players here. They're down seven. Critical juncture for the Sooners. It was a great job by Dominique Kirk one way or the other to make himself as much of a hassle in the two-on-one as he could and ended up creating a miss and free throws off the technical foul called against Jeff Cable. Midway through the second half, and it's a seven-point lead for Texas A&M. Look at A&M. They're doing a little alteration to their offensive set, using the back pick to initiate their offense. Five seconds on the shot clock. Law resets from a long way away. Carter gets caught in midair. One second, it's released. 
And won't go. Good half-court defense by Oklahoma. Oklahoma's been sound, as you just mentioned, Bob, defensively. But they've got to start connecting here on the offensive end because their shots are not going to come easy. Crocker's three won't go. And it's out off AM. Mays trying to get some encouragement to his teammate Crocker over there. He had a good look from three. Coach Caper with the freshman backcourt right now. Trying to come from behind on the road in a hostile environment. Shows you the level of confidence he has in these two young players. Todd Bold goes baseline. It's knocked away. And it stays once again with Oklahoma. Again, another great one-on-one -on -one job, though, done by Dominique Kirk. Such a tough on-the-ball defender. Well, Dominique Kirk is a guy that understood that he had to play defense to get on the floor. Some guys can score the ball. Some guys are great passers. Dominique knows that, hey, this guy loves defense. If I'm going to be on the court, I've got to be the best defender in the building. Crocker has thought about a three. Double teamed up top, gets a pick from Longar. This is Griffin. He can't get it to go. And Long has the loose ball. Longar slow up the floor, so some numbers for a and Well, you see now, no uncontested shots on both ends of the floor. Defensive level is really high right now, and no one can shake three of their individual defenders. Austin Johnson comes back on, and Nate Carter, after a long rest, comes back in as well. Taylor Griffin and Bobby Mays sit down for Oklahoma, as does Crocker, as Michael Neal has returned to the game. And Kavalaskis is going to get a brief rest for Texas A&M, as is Josh Carter. And Coach Capel and Coach Gillespie have done a really good job of knowing how physical this game and how physically draining their players can be. They've done a good job of being free with the substitution. Donald Sloan and Brian Davis both back in for the Aggies. A couple of freshmen. Carter right off the bench trying to become playmaker. Johnson is bumped up top by Donald Sloan, a freshman. And speaking of freshmen, they will be in the forefront tonight on ESPN2. First, we'll see Kevin Durant and Texas taking on Baylor at 6 Eastern. Then college game day at 8, preceding Michigan State. And number 5, Ohio State and Greg Oden. That game also available in high definition later on tonight. Neal for 3. And the rebound off to Sloan. Well, you won't see Neal do that very often. Wide open look. Michael Neal's usually dead eye from top of the key. Really, a, really off on that attempt. Oklahoma down to 33% from the field for the game. Jones, too strong. Offensive rebound by Davis. Davis gets caught on the baseline. Turns. Connect. Longar has the loose ball, and he's fouled. Davis picks up the personal, and for Brian Davis, that's his third. You can tell Brian Davis is not comfortable yet on the block offensively. Had the opportunity and was really forced into taking a shot because no one else was open. Both teams now with four team fouls here in the second half. Take a look. Davis right here goes up for the shot. And right before that, he looked like he didn't want to go after the, the opportunity offensively. But he did it anyway and picked up his third. And some credit to the officiating crew as well in that this game, very, very physical, which is the way you know both of these teams want to play, and yet not a lot of fouls yeah. have been called. Well, well, right now, only 14 fouls called against each, so we're still three team fouls apiece away from even shooting the bonus. There's only seven and a half minutes to go. Veteran officiating crew led by Steve Wilmer and John Higgins. These guys are familiar with both teams' style of play, which is so important. AC Law gets the roll. This is the largest lead for Texas A&M. It's now nine. AC Law needs another moniker. The shot maker can go to the hole full speed with an assortment of runners. And he makes it look easy, but one of the more difficult shots in the game. Neal feeds down low. Longar's shot is blocked, but a foul call. So Longar will shoot a pair. And we'll step aside. 7.04 remaining. 
the sixth ranked Aggies led by their Big 12 Player of the Year candidate, AC Law. They have a nine point lead. Over five tons of towing capacity, 2,010 pounds of payload. It seems in thinking ahead, our engineers left nothing behind. Introducing the more comfortable, more powerful, more capable, all-new 2007 GMC Sierra. We examined everything and overlooked nothing, then backed it with the GM 100,000-mile warranty. That's professional grade. Denny's PBA Tour, Sunday at 12.30 on ESPN. Saturday, February 3rd, a Super Brawl weekend with two championship fights. A battle of the unbeaten light heavyweights where Tomas Adamek defends his title against top contender Chad Dawson. Both are undefeated, but who will ring supreme? Plus, Jesus Chavez puts his IPF title on the line against Julio Diaz in a lightweight brawl. A doubleheader you can't miss. Saturday, February 3rd. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View or as part of your regular subscription to Showtime. Don't miss it. Adamek versus Dawson on Channel 122. This season, college basketball is coming right at you. With ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. He puts it up. It's good. It's buzzer beaters, upsets, and epic battles all season long. The top teams, the top conferences. And you can still get up to 30 games a week for just $75. ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. To get yours, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS. Russell Carter and Notre Dame trying to stay perfect at home. They're up next, taking on surging Villanova. Wildcats, winners of three straight. Coming in, guys. Well, winners of a bunch straight at home, the Texas A&M Aggies. And AC Law, with a typical AC Law game, balanced. Seven points, six rebounds, six assists, and he's helped offensively in the second half. We talked about earlier how complete this young man is. You see the outside Jay slithery around the basket, getting behind the defense. And this is probably what he does best. He finishes very, very well going to the hole with an assortment of runners and layups. He can shoot with either hand. And although the field goals don't look good right there, as you can see, he still, his overall effect on the game is great. And add six assists, so he has been a playmaker in what is a very difficult place for opponents to play. Who would have ever thought that Texas A&M would own the ninth longest home winning streak in the country, which is what they have right now. If they win today, it would be their 19th straight win at home, which of course stretches back to last year. And so far this year, they're 13-0 at home, so they began the streak at the end of last season, but again, Billy Gillespie, not only has this streak going here at Texas A&M, and not only has resurrected this program here at College Station, but he comes from another reclamation project at UTEP just before he arrived here. He took over a Texas El Paso team that was awful. They were a six-win team the year before he arrived, and he gets the job late. They only win six or seven games. One year later, they win 24 games. Their conference, they win the WAC and go to the Dets. Well, Billy Gillespie understands that in college basketball, if a team plays hard, they're going to have success. And it, it used to be a given, but it's not a given anymore. These young guys, they don't, I don't think, play quite as hard as the guys used to play. And so if you can get a bunch of guys to buy in and play hard every single night, that's a formula, regardless of the talent that you have, you can be successful. Now Jeff Capel needs his team to make some shots. But again, this is what Jeff, what Billy Gillespie did at UTEP. Again, the first year he gets there, 6-24. and 24. They win 18 more games the next year in 2003, and they go to the NCAA tournament. And then all he does is come to Texas A&M and win back-to-back -back coach of the year titles of the Big 12. And he is about to take his team to back-to-back -to -back tournament appearances in the NCAAs at Texas A&M for the first time in this school's history. Well, the good thing about what he does, if you're an opposing player, I know I used to hate it when we, when we would play against teams that play like A&M. 
when you know that you're going to have some skin taken off your legs and your arms, you're going to get hit in your face with elbows, not, not dirty, just hard nose plays. When you know that you got to face a team like that, there's a certain mental edge that a and takes in every game. Down to nine on the shot clock and a foul call, a bailout foul called against Oklahoma. Only a six-point lead now for Texas A&M with 5.44 to go. As we take a look at the Aggies under Billy Gillespie again, back-to-back -back Big 12 Coach of the Year awards. Well, he's done a fantastic job here in A&M. He knows that he really doesn't have to leave the state of Texas to recruit. A steal. Johnson in transition. Gets bumped. And a chance for a three-point play. Austin Johnson, the sophomore, is going to go to the line, and he will opportunity to make this a one possession game take a look at Austin Johnson the body looks slight but the heart is big big fella gets in here gets to the hole and has a presence of mind to go off the glass good job by Austin Johnson who hasn't scored a bunch today but he's made some critical plays for the Sooners well, last season, he battled an ankle injury all year long. He started 13 games and averaged three points and two assists. This year, he's in double figures for the eighth time. A jumper knocked down by Jones. And that stretches it back to a five-point lead. But Austin Johnson has now become a staple in the backcourt for Jeff Davis. He's doing a really good job of getting the guys into position to be successful this afternoon. Got bold fouled, and he'll go to the line. Josh Carter called for his second, and that will put Texas A&M in the penalty the rest of the way with 5.13 to go. This is a two-shot foul regardless, but from here on out, Oklahoma is going to be shooting free throws. Only 14 fouls have been called against Oklahoma so far in the second half. Well, Oklahoma has picked up on the philosophy of Nate Carter. If you're struggling from the field, you can get to the line and still keep yourself in the ball game and manufacture points. That's what they've done here. They've had a cold stretch in the second half, but they've continued to attack the basket and get a and into the foul trouble. God bold, only one of two at the line. A four-point game with five minutes and eight seconds to play. And Oklahoma has done a lot of their damage at the free throw line. Law, a blocking foul call. Neal tried to step in and take the charge. That's an excellent call by Higgins. I know Cable didn't like it, but watch Neal slide in at the last second. He's not set when the contact is made. Good call in heavy traffic. And although Law looked as if he was trying to dish the ball off, they credit him with a two-shot foul. I have never seen a building with this many fans get that quiet when, they, when their player is on the line. Check that. That foul actually put Oklahoma in the bonus. That foul was called on the floor, a one and one. Neal thought about it. That's it on the baseline to Carter, and he's fouled by AC Law. So Carter, who is 10 for 10 at the line this afternoon, goes back to the free throw line again. Well, you see Oklahoma, Jeff Capel has gone to some set plays here in the latter part of the second half, and he's trying to create and get guys in space. You see Neal has come off of a couple down screens for three-point shot opportunities. Long guards come from the weak side and post it up strong side, and that time they did the same thing for Nate Carter. Brought him from the weak side, strong side, let him go one-on-one, -on -one, he picks up the foul. Carter now has 13 points, 11 for 11 at the free throw line. How about one for 10 from the field and still finding a way to get to 13 and now 14 points this afternoon. And it's a two-point game with 4.47 to go. Nate Dog living up to his moniker. The junkyard dog in the paint. Just finding a way to stay close to this AM ball club. A lead for AM that not long ago was up to nine. Now Texas AM shooting 43% for the game. Carter with a season high and free throws made. And that pass deflected out. 13 seconds on the shot clock for the Aggies. Well, Billy Gillespie's crew really needs to look at Cavalazzi's on the block. He's been very quiet here the last three or four minutes. Hadn't had many opportunities offensively. But definitely look at the big fellow to get him going again. Jones double team. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Long into the corner. Kirk 
knocks it down. Dominique Kirk with a tough jump shot on the baseline. And it's a four-point lead for the Aggies. Just over four minutes to go. Dominique Kirk, 39% shooter on the year. Not known for creating offense, but boy, he reached down deep for that one. Godbold penetrates. Hangs off the front rim and Kirk the rebound. That's not the shot you want if you're Jeff Capel. And a foul at midcourt by Godbold. A little reach around that's called, and that is not the foul if you're Jeff Capel that you want to see. 50 feet from the basket, David Godbold's foul will put Texas A&M on the line when we come back. A big shot by Dominique Kirk, and it's a four-point lead for A&M. Thousand engineering hours, completely redesigning the new Sierra from the inside out. Introducing the more comfortable, more powerful, and the most fuel efficient all new 2007 GMC Sierra. We examined everything and overlooked nothing. That's professional grade. Hey, how's the taxes? I'm stuck. Stuck, eh? Yeah? Hmm. Maybe you should get some people to help us. Oh, that's right. We didn't use people. We used a box. Well, maybe you should tell the box you're stuck. I'm stuck. Now there's tax software from H&R Block. Only Tax Cut gives you direct access to an H&R Block tax professional. Hello? Even when you do it yourself with Tax Cut, you got H&R Block. You got people. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge to help you find your perfect flat panel TV. I pledge to watch football only on Saturday and Sunday. I pledge to set up your HD right. And Monday. I pledge to show this off to my girlfriends. And sometimes Thursday. I pledge to help you every step of the way. I pledge to be the house where all the kids want to hang out. For the ultimate viewing experience, we pledge to help you get the best picture for your HD TV. Plus, no interest till 2010. That's HD done right. At Best Buy. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GMC, engineered to the highest standard, professional grade. Coming up at the top of the hour, Villanova looks for its fourth straight win, led by outstanding freshman point guard Scotty Reynolds. The Wildcats are at the Joyce Center to take on the Irish and the Big East leading scorer, Russell Carter. I'm Sean McDonough. Hope you'll join Bill Raftery and me. But now, back to Bob Wischusen. All right, Sean, thanks very much. Scotty Reynolds, as a freshman at Villanova, is actually one of the freshmen that had signed That's up right. to come to Oklahoma and play for Kelvin Sampson and then left after Kelvin Sampson departed and Jeff Capel took over. And here at the Big 12 standings, you can see Texas A&M trying to break up that log jam at the top and get to 5-1 and one and reclaim first place overall but you know Oklahoma with their program where it is right now some impressive effort so far this season Steve considering the fact that they lost some talent once Jeff Capel took over and that freed some players that had signed for Kelvin Sampson to think about going other places yeah it, and they've done a really good job of coming together and keeping some of that residual toughness that they got from Sampson and really have accepted their roles under Jeff Capel and find themselves three and three in conference play if they can pull this one off they're all of a sudden in the upper echelon of the Big 12. And now they find themselves down six, though, with 3.35 remaining. Oklahoma needs some buckets. And Nate Carter with only one field goal made this afternoon. Neal off a curl in the lane. Too strong, but a foul call. And I believe that foul will be called against Joe Jones. Well, that was really good offensive execution that time by Oklahoma against AC Law. They took their time. They swung the ball a couple different times and Neal recognizing his defender was trailing curled into the paint and put pressure on defense. That's a good job of executing when they needed it the most. Neal an 82% free throw shooter. This is his first trip to the line today. And the senior doing what seniors do, making big free throws as Griffin comes back on, and Nate Carter will sit down. 
But Neal's got one of those pure shooter strokes. Not a lot of wasted motion. Locks it and lets it go. And he hasn't had that big of a fact on the offensive end thus far, but he can heat up in a hurry. A pair for Neal, and it's a four-point lead. 23 to go. Oh, I like this pressure right here. Full court pressure by the Sooners. Not necessarily going for a steal, but trying to take some shot time off the shot clock. And Jones might be in some trouble. Just did release it off to AC Law. Already, though, the first 15 seconds of the shot clock whittled off with Oklahoma pressure. It's down to 15 to shoot. And for AC Law on a high screen roll, try to get in the paint and create havoc. Seven seconds to shoot. Law with five on the 35. Floats and connects. AC Law, a beautiful stutter step. That's why it's so difficult to stop AM in that situation. AC Law is so creative with the basketball, and Joseph Jones can shoot the 15 footer, and you really can't give them anything because they can take advantage. Oklahoma looking for Neal. They've got to hurry as the shot clock's winding down. Johnson for three. With seven seconds on the shot clock, Johnson with an NBA three. And that's a frustrated Jeff Capel you see in the background coming up on two minutes to go. And here's A.C. Law again, right to the basket. And he's fouled by Longar. So A.C. Law will go to the line. Well, A.C. Law once again showing you his versatility. Turns the corner. And by the time he gets right there, it's just too late. Doesn't look fast, but he's got another gear, especially when going towards the hole. Very deceptive. Can go either right or left, showing you his versatility. 11 points for Law. Also has seven assists and six rebounds. Need to get adjusted there on the line. The AC is uh, one of those veteran ball players that... He can have an effect on the game so many different ways. Nate Carter comes back on. Longar sits down. Carter again with only one field goal. Longar to the bench with seven points and nine rebounds. One of two at the line for Law. Seven point AM lead with just over two minutes to play. And then Oklahoma made an adjustment. Longar is out of the game. Taylor Griffin can shoot the 15-foot jumper. Some nice adjustment here. Let's see if they can take advantage. Griffin with a jump stop. No good. Kavalaskis the rebound. And now the fans here at College Station sensing their team very much in control. 1.43 to go with the ball and a seven-point lead. Well, Taylor Griffin just took a tremendously tough shot. There was really nothing there. Law, what a chance for a three-point play. A.C. Law has taken over the closing moments of this game. Show you the, the wiry strong guard. Look at the bump that he takes. He has the strip to get it off the glass. That's a young man that knows where the weight room is. Foul called on Taylor Griffin. A.C. Law, a unanimous first team, all Big 12 player last year. Looks like he's headed right back to that list this year. Giving the new Sierra more power doesn't make it professional grade. Giving it more power while making it more fuel efficient does. Introducing the all new 2007 GMC Sierra. The only pickup that offers more than 300 horsepower and over 20 EPA estimated highway miles per gallon. That's professional grade. Expect more from a value meal. Introducing Wendy's Crispy Chicken Deluxe with all white meat, bacon, and cheese, or the Double Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe with fries and a drink. For just $2.99 every day, do what tastes right. 
I've been to Newark, Hackensack, three meetings back to back. Conference in Maine, put faces to name. Seminar Lombard, big stack of business cards. Stayed at Comfort Suites, got a hot breakfast free. Warehouse inventory, Foreman had a funny story. Big meeting, New Rochelle, told my boss all went well. This spring, stay at any Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, Quality Inn, Sleep Inn, or Clarion Hotel. You'll earn triple choice privileges points or triple airline rewards with your second stay. For reservations, visit choicehotels.com. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. I want aces dead. What are you trying to say? You with me, babe? <laughs> I'm going down. I bet you are. Smoking aces. Bones it. Padlock it. Put the chain on it. Make it on. Now playing. Dave Revson in our Sports Center in game studios. Want to update you on Arkansas and Alabama. Remember, the Hogs beat them big in Fayetteville, and they're doing it in Tuscaloosa as well. That's Charles Thomas. It's 31 18 Arkansas at the half. Well, Dave, here in College Station, the Texas AM fans, very happy. 62 53, they have the lead with a little over a minute and a half to go. Bob Oshusen and Stephen Bardo here. And we might be witnessing a bit of history yep. if Oklahoma yep. is not able to pull off the miracle comeback. The second time ever that Texas A&M would have beaten Oklahoma. And missed their 27th all-time meeting. And that shows you that Oklahoma, even last year when A&M was really good, I did the game last year, 46-45. Terrence Everett hits a shot as the shot clock's winding down to win. So Oklahoma's own these guys. Godbold hit the backboard first. Carter the rebound. And now the fouls begin. And A.C. Law will go the other way to shoot a pair. Let's take a look at what is to come for Texas A&M. And we will see them plenty on our ESPN family of networks. The game at Kansas, the home game here against Texas. And that will be some kind of atmosphere. And then they'll be looking for some revenge against Texas Tech on ESPN2. And a reminder, Texas is playing on ESPN2 a little bit later on against Baylor. That game at 6, so we'll see Kevin Durant at 6. And then at 9, Michigan State will take on Ohio State. And we will get another look at Greg Oden again. Kevin Durant and Greg Oden both playing early evening and night games on ESPN2. Two of the more exciting players in college basketball. Kevin Durant, we've seen what he's done on the road, especially that triple overtime game, Oklahoma State. And Greg Oden really playing with one hand has dominated the Big Ten in the paint. Quick timeout called by Jeff Capel after Nate Carter's second field goal of the game. He now has 16 overall. And unfortunately for the Sooners, this looks like another very spirited road effort right. that will probably fall short. They have Longwood coming up on the 30th, wedged in all of the Big 12 games, and then Texas Tech and Oklahoma State at home. Well, they've got those home games you see there, but Texas Tech is playing as well as anybody in the Big 12. And Oklahoma State, as we know, is a very tough ball club, so you think they can get healthy when they go, come back home and get some momentum. And this is that first recruiting class for Jeff Capel. Yeah, it's outstanding group right there. Blake Griffin is really the stud in that group. Younger brother of Taylor Griffin, a, a taller, bigger, and, and more talented version. So Jeff Capel getting the stocks, uh, you know, the cabinets full and Norman, just like he left VCU and their stock full in the way that they're playing this year. You have to figure any program that recruits a guard with the last name Naismith also is on the right track. Different spelling, same idea, and a foul called before AM is even able to inbound the ball. So Joe Jones was fouled. As Nate Carter picks up his third. And how about the big three? for Texas A&M. A.C. Law with 17 points. Joseph Carter with 13. Cavalaskis has 20. Those three players combining for 50 points. They have almost outscored Oklahoma by themselves. Those three players have 50, and Oklahoma's got 55. And that's the, those are the statistics that we were talking about earlier, what makes this club so difficult to, you know, to go against and how they made life hard on the Sooners, even though the Sooners got out quick. 
and they're basically right on their average. Second in the nation in scoring defense. Texas A&M allows only 54 points per game. And right now, they've allowed 55 today. Uh, outstanding job. You know, Coach Gillespie sent a clear message to his ball club when he sat his five starters down minutes into the ball game. Let them know he is not pleased with your effort. And when they came back in the game, it was de defensive intensity was definitely elevated. A little over a minute to go. And the crowd here wants the ball back in play. And they want to celebrate a win over Oklahoma. <laughs> these fans have never had the chance, at least these students, to celebrate a win over Oklahoma. They were all in fourth grade the last time Texas A&M was able to beat the Sooners. Nate Carter has a chance for a three-point play. It might be too little too late for Nate Carter, but he now has 16, ups it to 18. Well, this is the matchup problem and nightmare that Nate Carter gives opposing power forwards in this conference. See there, he's 6'6", going against the 6'10", Kabalaskis. He knows his foot speed is probably going to be better. He uses that to his advantage to get to the hole. Nate Carter now with 18 points and seven rebounds as we update our star watch. Jones with seven and seven. No other player for Oklahoma, though, is in double figures. And Carter stays perfect at the line. 13 for 13, 19 points overall. But Tony Crocker and Michael Neal, both with eight apiece. Those are the next highest scorers for Oklahoma. Villanova Notre Dame is standing by, about 53 seconds away. Oh, Josh Carter was looking for the touchdown pass. Going against the pressure. And Law fouled immediately by Crocker, his second. So now A.C. Law will walk the other way and shoot free throws. And we'll see the best free throw shooting team in the Big 12, as in Texas A&M. Top defensive team, most efficient offensive team, and best free throw shooting team. No wonder they're number six in the country. And led by A.C. Law. He continues stay hot at the line. He now has 18. There are only two players in the history of this program that have at least 1,000 points scored and 400 assists, and Law's one of the two. So, you know, he is really the rock that they have built this program around. And you have to feel good for a player like this as well. He's now a senior. I mean, he kind of toiled here for a couple of years before Billy Gillespie came. And I'm sure when he was a freshman or sophomore, he never imagined that he was going to play at home in atmospheres like this. If you go on the road, you're going to play at Kansas and Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, very tough places to play. But I'm sure A.C. Law never thought that that atmosphere would be here. Well, and then also, he probably never envisioned that there would be NBA scouts here watching his games, thinking that he has the ability to play on the next level. And that's come from all hard work. He doesn't jump higher than anybody else. His jumper, he shoots a knuckleball. It's kind of unusual. He's, he's a little crafty in the paint, but he's an old school throwback type of guard. And it's come from hard work that he has the ability and possibly the opportunity at the next level. But I, what I think about AC Law more than anything else is that he's a winner. The guy just knows what to do to get it done to win the basketball game. And this is his heir apparent at the line. Donald Sloan, only a freshman from Dallas. They have very high hopes that once A.C. Law leaves, he can basically be the next A.C. Law. From the corner, Johnson forces a three. Godbolt, the offensive rebound. And Johnson tries again and connects. And a quick timeout called by Jeff Capel, not giving up hope, down eight with 21 seconds remaining. And if you'd like to see the effect Billy Gillespie has had here on Texas A&M, well, this was not a scene that was often played out at this building ever before his arrival. But this is about 90 minutes before game time, and it only took about 20 or 25 minutes for all of the students to fill this place up. There was not an empty seat in that student section an hour and 15 minutes before the game started. No, they were anxious about getting in here this afternoon and seeing the end 
of the suited combination of the Aggies on the hardwood. So they were very anxious to get into this game. And I'm sure we'll see, that's going to be something we see the rest of the season here at Neal Arena. And especially the way A&M is playing. Just fantastic basketball. And when you can win a home game the way they started, they could have easily been down 10 points with the way Oklahoma came out and shot the ball early. But their defensive ability allows them to stay in the basketball game. You can see that Villanova and Notre Dame just underway. The first 30 seconds or so gone by in the scoreless first half. Again, they are standing by in South Bend, and we will immediately head to South Bend as soon as our game is over. And a timeout called by Texas A&M as Jeff Capel applauds the defensive intensity of his team, denying the inbound. Well, the fans don't like it right now, but Jeff Capel is more concerned with teaching points on his club right now on the road. And both teams have some timeouts left. Again, as we take a look at the top ten in the country, and all season long, Texas A&M has floated somewhere between 6th and 13th. Now, they lost their last game to Texas Tech. A road loss in the Big 12, those will happen, but they will most likely... Uh, that loss will most likely drop Texas A&M a few spots in spite of the fact that they're about to beat Oklahoma here at home today. But they're a legit top 10 team. Well, you see the number seven and number eight teams, Oregon and Kansas, both have losses this week as well. So it, it may bode well for A&M to definitely stay in the top 10 and not lose much ground. Because, again, Texas Tech, one of the hotter teams in the Big 12, you expect that in conference play for a team in the upper echelon to hold serve at home. That's all Texas A&M has done this year. They are undefeated at home and stretching back to last season. They have won 18 straight games here at Reed Arena. And that's the ninth longest home winning streak in Division I. But and it not only talks about the level of play by A&M, but it also talks about the parity in college basketball where we've had a number of long home winning streaks uh, be broken this season. And speaking of parity, with Villanova and Notre Dame only moments away. We'll be taking you there. There are other games to watch. A reminder coming up tonight on ESPN2. We're going to have Grego taking center stage, Michigan State and Ohio State. And then Monday night, that is a good one. Pitt and Villanova at the Wachovia Center at 7. And then later on on Monday night, San Diego taking on Gonzaga. And I believe you are going to be heading west to see the Gonzaga Bulldogs play on Monday night. We'll be in Spokane for that ball game. And Slightly past your bedtime. We appreciate you staying up. Austin Johnson looking for some room and not finding any. Inside to Griffin with seven seconds to go. Davalaskis keeps it alive. Three seconds to go. It's loose on the floor with two seconds to go. It's a held ball. It goes over to Texas A&M, and that will just about make it official. A nine-point lead for the Aggies. And Villanova and Notre Dame with about three minutes gone by in the first half. They are standing by in South Bend. And this improves Billy Gillespie's record at home to 62 and six here at UTEP combined. Six home losses in four years as a head coach. And the first time in a decade that Texas A&M has a win over Oklahoma. And the second win over Oklahoma in school history. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Bob Washusen saying so long from South Bend now, so, so long from here now to South Bend and Sean McDonough. Thank you, Bob. Welcome, everybody, to the Joyce Athletic and Convocation Center in Notre Dame, Indiana. Villanova and Notre Dame for the second time in 10 days. Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery, delighted to have you with us. The game tied at six here in the opening four plus minutes. Luke Heron Goody just off the bench for the Irish turned it over. And here's Mike Nardi in transition. Charged in the falls without a whistle and then missed the shot. Uh, falls with a good presentation. Notre Dame's done a nice job getting in the lane. They get the good look here for Kurz, but mostly they get that look off a dribble penetration and kick. 